This is a PM Models C Fury FB11 in 172nd scale, and if I'm being brutally honest, I wasn't going to make a video on it. I just wanted something cheap, simple, easy, and fun to build that I didn't have to worry about presenting. And then I thought to myself, but maybe it's important that people see this too. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, so many of us strive for perfection in our builds, and just once in a while it's good to remember that sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves. So here's me, just having fun and building the way I want to build. I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and join me on the workbench today as I show you how I built this PM Models C Fury in 172nd scale. For a more in-depth look at the contents of the kit, take a look at the dedicated unboxing video I made on that topic. In this video, I'll be showing you how I built it and what it looks like at the end. I'll put a list of products that I used on the screen now, and as you can see, I did this with the almost bare minimum of products that I could, because I didn't really want to do that much to this kit. But anyways, I think it's time to get into some actual construction. After having washed the sprues in warm soapy water off camera and then letting them dry, I removed the parts that I needed from the sprue using my side cutters. Once this was done, any flash or rough areas could be cleaned up using a sanding stick or a knife. This kit is a little bit old now, so there is flash in a few places. Humbrol Precision Poly Cement will be my glue of choice throughout this build. And the first parts that could be assembled were the cockpit seat and backrest into the cockpit floor. Following this, they could then be glued into one half of the fuselage. I'm going to use Model Master paints primarily during this build because I saw some in the model shop and I thought to myself, I've never actually tried these before and I think that they are discontinued now so the chances of me ever going to try them were getting smaller by the day. So I've picked up this green one and I'm going to use it on the inside cockpit areas of the model. I was quite impressed with this enamel because it only really needed one coat. It went on quite quickly and it wasn't that blotchy so it was, it was pretty good. When that was dry, I then used the precision poly on the edges of the fuselage to join them together, and it fits together quite well, but I did need to hold it for a little while to make sure that it fully cured. Once that was done, the engine could be added onto the nose of the model. I'm doing this out of sequence, so you're supposed to add the propeller before you do this, but I wasn't bothered about making it spin, so just carried on. Now I'm going to open up the slot in the bottom of the wing where the drop tanks go. This had to be done on both sides and then once I'd done that the holes for the rockets need to be drilled open as well. The lower wings and upper wing surfaces can now be joined together, but there are landing lights on both sides which come as clear parts which need to be installed first. So I made sure not to forget to add this small clear part before gluing the upper wing surface on top because I did actually do that in the previous PMC Furies that I built, but um, we'll cover that later. After this, the horizontal tail surfaces can be added into their slots and then the fuselage joined to the wings. The drop tanks come in two parts and it's a relatively simple step to just join them together. The rocket rails were then glued into their holes that I drilled in the bottom of the wings. The drop tanks could then also be installed into their slots that I previously cut. Following this, the landing gear covers which go on the tail of the aircraft were glued into their little slot. And this was then followed by a little light sanding down all of the seams just to make them look a little tidier. You'll notice that there are some gaps particularly around the wing roots and where the fuselage meets the lower wing surfaces, but I just didn't have the capacity to deal with them during this build. Model Master French Dark Blue Grey was now painted onto the internal landing gear areas on the underside of the aircraft. I also used this paint to cover the spinner which will go on the nose and propeller a little bit later. Only a couple of thin coats were needed for this paint. 
Now it's time for the Flat Sea Blue, which is also a model master enamel paint. This was thinned down with a little white spirit to make it flow a little bit better. This thinned down paint was then applied to the entire surface of the model, taking care to avoid the landing gear areas which I have already painted with that light grey colour. In all, it took about three layers of paint to get a uniform overall finish, and I had forgotten how long enamels take to dry, so it was a little bit frustrating that I couldn't make quick progress, but in the end, I was pretty happy with the results. The cockpit canopy was simply painted freehand using the dark blue paint for the front frames and the light blue grey colour for the frame around the back of the canopy. This is a Ravel enamel number one, it's a gloss varnish and when the blue was dry on the aircraft I gave a good coating of this paint uh, to prepare the surface for the decals. But before we get to the decals and whilst that paint is drying the green from earlier was used again on the rockets which are still on the sprue because I thought it would make it a little bit easier to paint them. Ravel Matte 9 which is an anthracite grey was then used to paint the tyres on the wheels taking care to avoid the centres which I've already painted with that light blue grey paint from earlier. There are two main wheels which needed this paint and also the tail wheel which I left on the sprue for now to make it a little bit easier to complete this step. You'll be able to notice here that some of the landing gear parts are still on the sprue and have already been painted. The propeller blades also received a coat of this black paint. Now it's time to get some decals on the model so I cut the sheet into more manageable sections correctly identifying the ones that I would need. I then soaked them in warm water and full disclosure I did add a drop of vinegar to the warm water because I wasn't using any setting solutions during this build. So they pretty much went onto the model as they were with a little bit of this water and vinegar mix. Generally the decals are okay, they're not the worst ones that I've used but they're certainly not the best. They seem to apply to the model quite well and they did settle down into the details fairly alright but when we get to the end I did notice a little bit of silvering and that could partly be because I maybe didn't apply enough gloss to the aircraft and it wasn't a smooth enough surface or the fact that I didn't use a decal setting solution which has you know possibly not helped. But on the whole it wasn't too noticeable and on the large ones it wasn't too bad either. Ravel number 12, which is a yellow enamel paint, was then used to very carefully pick out the tips of the propeller blade. I did this on both the front and the back sides. I then painted some yellow bands onto the rockets. The dark blue and the blue grey were then mixed together in sort of equal parts to make a darker grey and then this was carefully painted onto the exhaust panel just behind the engine. Next up I'm going to mix some gloss number one and some matte number two varnish together to create a sort of satin finish. These were mixed together in almost equal parts and then carefully applied to the entire model and left to dry. This will help seal in those decals and give a uniform finish to the aircraft. Now it's time to complete the final stages of assembly. The propeller was glued into the propeller spinner and then I joined the retaining pin onto the back. I actually had to cut it um, because you're supposed to install it before you do the nose cowling but this way I can just poke it on at the end. The landing gear tail wheel was carefully glued into its little hole at the back of the model, taking care to make sure that I got it sort of aligned centrally with the fuselage and not off to one side or the other. Next up, the arrestor hook gets glued into a tiny little hole just behind the landing gear. This took a little bit of thought to get right because you have to have it with the hook pointing 
down so that it can catch the arrestor wires whereas I think originally I put it the wrong way up uh, and had to correct it but yeah so this this is quite a fiddly part and it may take a little bit of time to get it in the right position now we can add the landing gear covers to the inside of the gear bay wells and then this was followed by the rest of the landing gear assembly. So to start with I glued the landing gear leg onto the main cover then I added the wheel onto the landing gear leg. The landing gear parts are a little bit clunky and a little bit simplistic but they do support the aircraft enough and they don't bend when it is stationary. These parts were then added into their holes, making sure that they don't fall out and go everywhere. And then there is a tiny little support strut which has to also be glued into place to help ensure that the landing gear stays open. This was followed by adding the pitot tube into the leading edge of the wing and then I glued the propeller assembly into the hole in the front of the model. This was followed by installing the four rockets onto the rails on the bottoms of the wings, taking care to make sure they were all sitting at the correct angles. And then finally, the last step was to glue the cockpit canopy in place. And that's it. So let's do a little bit of a review of the kit. As I'm sure you've probably noticed by now, this is not a particularly modern tooling of the Sea Fury. This kit was originally a Pioneer 2 model kit and released back in 1988. It has since been part of the Matchbox and Airfix range, but for now it is an offering from PM Model. The particular version I have here dates back to 2020. And when I was in the shop, it was retailing for £6.45. A quick look online, that seems to be about right. Other retailers have it for around the £7 mark, which, if I'm honest, is a reasonable price for this kit. And there's a good reason why I say that. There are kits from other companies, particularly Airfix and Ravel, who have similar aged kits in their ranges. Granted, for Airfix, it tends to be more of a vintage classic type of deal, but they are of a similar quality and a similar price. It is a little bit annoying that PM model don't tell you that this is an old tooling on the box because you know it looks quite modern with the artwork that they've used but at least this particular tooling does benefit from those recessed panel lines which I'm sure at the time were a brand new revolution. The detail in general is okay it's a bit simplified the parts are a bit chunky the fit was generally quite good but as I'm sure you've all noticed there were quite a lot of gaps. And yes, if you're feeling up to it, then you can fill those gaps as much as you like and hide them with some model filler. However, like I said at the beginning, I didn't build this to show the world how good I am at modeling. I built this purely because I wanted something fun, simple and easy to do that was just for me. Sometimes we worry so much about getting the kit to be perfect that we forget to have fun. And that's what I wanted to do in this build was just to have fun. And that's why I went with the Australian paint scheme because it was one of the simplest in the kit. That and the shop had colours which kind of matched up to it. Speaking of the paints, they might not be you know, exactly right or realistic for the paint scheme that I've gone for. But as far as I'm concerned, they're close enough and it looks all right in the end. Those model master paints, the first time I've used them, they were all right to use. I don't tend to use enamels because I find the drying time to be quite excessive, with enamels generally taking up to three days to properly dry, which for someone like me who doesn't always get, you know, a chance to come back to a model after three days or whatever, I kind of have to do as much as I can in the small amounts of time that I have at the workbench. Acrylics are much better because they let me just crack on and paint the model and it dries and then I can move on to the next step but with this one it was much more leisurely. Granted I did build this over about three or four days but the steps were simple and it allowed me to spread out the different activities that I was doing so it wasn't causing me any stress and it was quite enjoyable to do. The instructions in the kit are printed in black and white which does make it less than ideal when you're trying to paint different colours seeing as they've used grey 
and different shades of gray to highlight which colors should be which. So, you know, that's less than ideal and it was a bit of guesswork. Additionally, I noticed after I'd done the unboxing that although there are five paint schemes included in this kit, which is, you know, great, Airfix and Revell for the same sort of price, would you would be lucky to find two paint schemes in their kits, but for this one, we've got five. Um, but as I was saying, the, the fifth one uh, is marked incorrectly. It's not an Australian aircraft, it is one for Pakistan. Perhaps an oversight on the instruction writer's part there. Additionally, with the kit that I was building, it says on the instructions that there should be the word Navy on the lower left wing on the underside. However, there was no transfer included in the kit for that, so I just didn't bother. Perhaps that's an oversight on the instructions or an oversight on the decal creation part. Decals were generally all right. I didn't have like high hopes for them. Yes, possibly where I didn't bother to use a setting solution or maybe I didn't put enough gloss down. There is a bit of silvering, but it's something that I personally can live with. After all, I'm the only one who has to see this when it's sitting on my shelf. Oh, and I mentioned earlier that I have already built one of these. I built the trainer version probably about 15 years ago. It was effectively the same kit. It does come with a slightly different fuselage to allow for the two seat uh, in tandem. But at the time, if I remember correctly, the transfers were either not included or they were like incredibly yellowed and not usable. So I actually ended up using transfers from a, well, I think it might have been a, a swordfish or something. But anyway, it was from the spares box. So I, I used different transfers to finish it in a paint scheme, which sort of looked all right. As you can see on this one, it's been in the garage a while. It's, it's damaged, it's broken, it's missing parts. I can't find them. And in some places, I didn't bother to even install the lights on, on the underside because I just forgot that they needed to go in there. But that being said, you can see that in, on comparing both of them together, the mold quality hasn't really changed at all in the last 15 years or so. I was actually tempted to get the silver one when I was in the shop and, you know, have another go at it. But I ended up going for the FB11 rather than the trainer version because I thought maybe something a little bit different would be more interesting to do. But anyways, I think it's probably time to start wrapping this one up here. The PM model Sea Fury is an older kit, which although does have some nice features, is generally a little bit clunky, a little bit lacking in detail. The mold quality is questionable. The instructions are a bit, well, less than perfect. And the transfers leave a little bit to be desired. But generally for the price, it's not too bad. And it does present a fairly easy, quick and satisfying build if you don't put too much stress into it. The Model Master paints, they were all right, and I might be tempted to get some more in the future. But for me though, I just have fun. And I hope that you have had fun watching this video too. And maybe something I've said has resonated with you. And if you agree with my thoughts, let me know down in the comments. As always, a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the support they give the channel. Massive thanks to these guys on screen. And I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Oscar, who joins us as a patron. Welcome to the club. To find out how you can get involved, take a look at the link in the description. If you're new here and you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you sub to the channel and dropping a like will help others with a similar interest see this one too. Finally, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time. Thank you.